so it, it sounds like you have such a great plan for schools and, and the trajectory there. Um, but I have a question, so that all that good work doesn't go undone. Um, you know, obviously I want to be as inclusive as possible. But even last night when we were at dinner, somebody offered us drugs. And so I, I'd like to just hear, how do, you, how do you thread that needle of inclusivity, being welcoming, while also stopping some fentanyl? I don't know. I'd like to hear if you have thoughts on that. I really appreciate the question. There's probably nothing more important than the safety and security of our communities, of our families, especially of our kids and, and our grandkids. We see under Abbott's failed leadership, violent crime going up, drug trafficking going up. When we're focused on pulling stunts and scoring political points, we take our eye off the ball in the real problem where it is. I'll give you some examples. Despite the pleading of sheriffs and police chiefs from across this state, Abbott turned his back on them and signed into law something known as permitless carry, which allows anyone to carry a loaded gun in public without a background check, without any training or vetting whatsoever. Now, we used to have something that you all are familiar with called license to carry. And if you wanted to carry a gun in public, we said, that's perfectly fine. Let's just make sure that you go through a background check so that we are able to determine whether you have a past as a violent criminal whether you abuse the people in your lives. Let's make sure that you have some training, so you have some proficiency with that firearm and don't hurt yourself or hurt somebody else. Let's just make sure that we do our due diligence before we let you out on the streets. And by and large, that program worked. And for some in the rest of the country, this was the pride of the nation. This is how you do it right. But for some reason, and probably to score points with the NRA and the gun lobby and the corporations, Greg Abbott threw that all away, turned his back on those cops, signed permitless carry into law, and you now have Texas leading the nation in the number of cops and sheriff's deputies who have been gunned down. You have a predictable spike in gun violence, and you have a slide in the clearance rate for violent crime in the state of Texas. When Abbott took office, the clearance rate was 70%. Today, it is 50%. So here are some ideas on how we can stop violent crime. Um, here's some ideas on how we can stop drug trafficking in our communities. First, at the border, let's make sure that we lead as a state, not as Democrats and not as Republicans, enforcing a rewrite of our immigration laws so that we can address those who want to come here and work, return to their home country with the money that they've earned here legally and in an orderly fashion. Let's address the wait times if you want to get in the back of the line which in some countries like Mexico and India and the Philippines means you wait 20 years to legally immigrate to the United States. We're providing a perverse incentive for people to cut that line and cross in between the ports of entry. Let's take that away as an excuse. Let's make sure that we clear up our asylum system. We're seeing historic levels of brutality and death on this continent in the Northern Triangle of Central America to the point that people are willing to send their 12-year-old daughters their 11-year-old sons on a 2,000-mile journey without their family to try to seek asylum and refuge in this country as the parent of three kids, and you all are parents and grandparents as well, you would never do that unless you had to do that. And clearly these people feel like they have to do it. We could clear that asylum backlog by making sure that we have more asylum hearing officers at our ports of entry and at the border, that we end Title 42 so that we honor the asylum laws that are on the book and have rule of law where this country meets the rest of the world and say clearly, if you want to come to this country, you must follow our laws. We have updated our laws to reflect our values and our needs and our priorities. That allows us to focus on the real challenges like human smuggling and the smuggling of fentanyl that you just mentioned into this country. And then the second thing, and this comes from listening to deputies and officers and members of law enforcement from around the state. They don't want to be intervening in a case of homelessness. Although right now we send the cops out to deal with somebody who's experiencing that sleeping on the sidewalk right now. We don't want sheriff's deputies intervening in a mental health care crisis that is non-violent, where the person's not a danger to themselves or anyone else in their family. We want to send somebody who is trained to deal with this, a therapist, a social worker, a clinician, we can do that, again, not for lack of resources, for lack of political will. If we were to do that, we would free up those cops and sheriff's deputies to focus on violent crime, to clear that backlog. I mentioned it went from 70 to 50 percent, to do 
a better job of reducing murders and rapes. Remember when he signed the abortion ban and a reporter asked him, Governor, you, you understand there's no exception for incest or rape. And like a deer caught in the headlights, he said, well, we're going to eliminate rape in the state of Texas. <laughs> not only has he not eliminated rape in the state of Texas, it has gotten worse, at least in terms of the clearance of these violent crimes. So instead of pulling stunts or scoring political points, I've gone to members of law enforcement to ask them how we get this done. And that's what they tell us. They say, free us to focus on violent crimes, to deter them, to investigate them, to bring criminals to justice, closure and resolution for, vic for victims. When I'm governor, we're going to focus on that, and public safety is going to improve in the state of Texas. Thanks for asking the question. Appreciate it.